Good morning to everyone who has come to Carol's Counseling Corner this morning. We have been talking about some very important things that will help us to be better people, better Christians, better mothers and fathers and husbands and wives, and just better people, and that is how to hear God's voice. I think everybody really wants to be able to do that, and so that's what we've been talking about. And our subject has been the sanctuary service that uh, we find in the Old Testament. But since we don't have a sanctuary on earth anymore, we're talking about the heavenly sanctuary and how to connect with Jesus, how to connect with the Father in the heavenly sanctuary through the Old Testament sanctuary service that gives us that gives us symbols that helps us to know how to do that. Let's have a word of prayer. Dear Father in heaven, dear Jesus, thank you so much for all that you are doing for us constantly in the heavenly sanctuary. Oh Lord, we just um, would love to be able to talk to you in person, but we're so grateful that until the time comes when we can, that we can talk to you in the spirit and that we can hear your voice that we can know you personally, we can learn to know your voice. And we just pray that you will bless us as we're studying these things, that our whole lives will, uh, will take a change that will help us to be able to walk with you as did Moses and Enoch and Elijah and, and Abraham. We want to be your friends as they were. We want to be a personal friend and we want to hear your voice so that we can. And Jesus, you have said, your, um, your sheep hear your voice. And so we want to learn how to do this so that we can know you and to have you always with us at all times. And we pray that today we will be able to study things that will help us to do that. In Jesus' name, amen. We've been talking about the sanctuary as it has to do with communion with God. And since that's the whole purpose of the sanctuary, is communion with God, that we every day, every moment of the day, can be in connection with heaven. Because when Jesus was on this earth, there was still an earthly sanctuary. But he became the sanctuary. He was the sanctuary. And he gave his life. He was the lamb that was slain. He was, then when he went, was resurrected, he went to heaven, back to his father, to the heavenly sanctuary. And there he began a special work of helping his people to get ready for that day that he would come and get us. You know, we can't go to heaven just the way we are. We must have a cleansing. We must have a relationship with Jesus. Some people think that everybody and some religions feel that, that everybody is going to end up in heaven. But that's not the case. That's not the teaching of Scripture. Not everyone will. Only those who know Jesus personally, who have given their hearts to Him, who walk with Him, will be with Him for eternity. And I know that all of you want to be with Him for eternity. Now, we talked about how praise is the first step, come into His courts with praise. And so praise and thanksgiving is number one to start with in our relationship with Jesus. Then confession and repentance as Jesus shows us the things that are in our lives that he wants us to confess and to have cleansed. And then the cleansing of the word, using the word to have our minds cleansed and brought into harmony with the Holy Spirit. Now we are going to talk about how the priests would go through the curtain now into the holy place. No one but the priests would go into the holy place. The people were allowed to come into the court, but that was all the further they could go. So the priest now takes the blood of the sacrifice into the holy place. And as he goes through those curtains, the curtains closed to anybody else's eyes. The first thing as we walk into that holy place what, that we see is the seven branch candlestick. And so this, this seven branch candlestick represents something extremely important. So I'm going to read in Revelation 4 where John in his vision saw that holy place, not on earth, 
but the holy place in heaven. And so I'm going to begin reading with chapter 4, Revelation chapter 4, verse 1, and we will get to peek into, past the first curtain, into the holy place of heaven. After this I looked, verse 1, Revelation 4, verse 1, After this I looked, and there before me was a door standing open in heaven. And the voice I had first heard, speaking to me like a trumpet, said, Come up here. So he's going to be invited in vision to come up to the heavenly sanctuary. And the door is standing open. And I will show you what must take place after this. At once I was in the Spirit, and there before me was a throne in heaven with someone sitting on it. And the one who sat there had the appearance of jasper and carnelian. A rainbow resembling an emerald encircled the throne. Surrounding the throne were twenty-four other thrones, and seated on them were twenty-four elders. They were dressed in white and had crowns of gold on their heads. From the throne came flashes of lightning, rumblings, and peals of thunder. Before the throne, seven lamps were blazing. There, these are the seven spirits of God. Now, who do you think this being was that has just been described? I assure you that this is God the Father. Now, no man, no human being has seen God the Father. But we have his appearance here uh, as, as John is looking in through that open door. And he has the appearance of Jasper and Carnelian and this rainbow around him and so forth. And flashes of lightning and rumblings and peals of thunder like the Israelites heard when they were hearing God speak from Mount Sinai. Wherever God is, there's a lot of, of things going on and this is what was happening there. And so uh, with God the Father sitting there, we also have before him a, a, a seven-branch candlestick. Now, that is uh, what they had in the sanctuary on earth, was a seven-branch candlestick. Here it seven, says seven lamps were blazing, but you can also read that as seven-fold lamp. And that's what uh, was in the, in the earthly sanctuary, so we can say that this is the same in the heavenly sanctuary. Seven lamps or seven-fold lamp. And what did it represent? It represented the Holy Spirit. Now, the Holy Spirit is, uh, is a part of the whole uh, Godhead family. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And so we have God the Father, and now we see God the Holy Spirit that is before him. And there are seven. Now I asked the Lord one time, why are there seven? Or what are they? What does, what does that mean? And some people would say, well, seven means complete. Well, yes, that's true, but complete what? And so I asked the Lord, and he guided me to a text in the Old Testament, which I will go with you momentarily. However, before I do, I want to skip over to chapter 5 because we have two of the members of the Godhead, but now we're going to see the third one, and who do you suppose that is? Well, of course, it is Jesus. And so we go over to chapter 5, verse 6, and it says, Then I saw a lamb, looking as it had been slain, standing in the center of the throne, encircled by the four living creatures and the elders. He had seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. So Jesus now, not only is there the, uh, the golden lampstand, which is the Holy Spirit, but Jesus also has the Holy Spirit. So before the throne of God, the Father is the Holy Spirit, and then Jesus has the seven spirits. So again, it's seven. Now in the Bible, it's true that seven means complete. But I, the Lord directed me in my studies in finding out what, why is seven? What are these seven spirits? Now we just read that Jesus has the seven spirits of God sent out into the, all, all the earth. And so God directed me through some studies that I was doing and so forth 
to Isaiah 11, and I'm going to read that to you. Verse 1, a shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots, a branch will bear fruit. Branch with a capital B. Now, who do you suppose that is? Who's the root of Jesse? Well, Jesse was David, uh, King David's father. Uh, and King David is called, uh, is a progenitor of Christ. And so we're talking here about that branch, capital B, is Jesus himself. Of course, in the Old Testament, Jesus hadn't come yet. But now he is, he has uh, come in our day and we can look back and see what the seven spirits are. Oh, look at this. Verse 2, the spirit of the Lord will rest on him, dash, the spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the spirit of counsel and of power, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. And he will delight in the fear of the Lord. Now, I'm not going to turn to this because of, of uh, the amount of time that I have. But if we uh, looked in, um, in Proverbs 8, which you can look up at some other time, it says that the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. So here is a, a, a part of the Holy Spirit that helps us to hate evil. We need the Holy Spirit possessing us. And if we love evil, the Holy Spirit will not be able to possess us. And we want to be possessed by the Spirit as was Jesus. Uh, then it says, he will not judge by what he sees with his eyes or decide by what he hears with his ears, but with righteousness he will judge the needy, and with justice he will dis give decisions for the poor of the earth. Now that, this is Hebrew poetry. In Hebrew poetry, there, there has to be a balance. So you have six here, three on one side, three on the other, and then the seventh one is called the spirit of judgment. How do I know that? Because in Isaiah 4, I should say, um, yes, Isaiah 4, we read about the spirit of judgment. And that uh, is in chapter 4, verse... Um, no, I read four. The Lord will wash away the filth of the women of Zion. He will cleanse the bloodstains from Jerusalem by a spirit of judgment and a spirit of fire. So that's the seventh spirit. So we have all uh, very, very important parts of the Holy Spirit that Jesus himself has. He's filled by the Spirit, and we too need to be filled by the Spirit so that we can have wisdom, understanding, counsel, power, knowledge, and the fear of the Lord, which is hatred of evil. Don't you want that? Hatred of evil. We were born with carnal natures and of ourselves. We do not hate evil, but the Holy Spirit can cleanse us and give us that hatred of evil and then the righteous judgment. And so God has offered to us in the sanctuary, not only are we to be emptied and prepared by the other steps that we've talked about, which is praise, confession, and the word of God implanted in us, but now we're going to be filled by the very power of God. God can't pour out his Holy Spirit where the vessel is uncleansed. Does that make sense? Because if we have an uncleansed, uncleansed vessel of our minds and our hearts, how can he come in and then fill us unless we have given up the uncleansed part? And so as we're cleansed, now we're filled by the Holy Spirit. And we can have Jesus living in us because as we saw this slain lamb had the seven spirits and he's sending them out into all the earth he's looking for people that are willing to cooperate with him to go through the cleansing and to have the outpouring of his spirit in the early and latter rain it talks about in the bible maybe we'll talk about that sometime too but right now we just want to know are we ready to receive that spirit do we do you sometimes wish that you had knowledge to understand how to cope with your daily life? How to, how to be able to cope with your, your work, your family, your children, your husband, wife, or whatever it may be, how to cope. And here's all this wisdom that we need, all this righteousness that can be ours 
straight from heaven, straight from Jesus. We can have what he had. If we are cleansed and ready for it, he will give us the outpouring of his spirit so that we will be like him. Let's have a word of prayer. Dear Father in heaven, dear Jesus, thank you so much for giving us the promise of the Spirit. It's all throughout the Bible that this promised Spirit will be poured out, especially in the last days. And we know we're in the last days. We know by the things that are happening in the world that time is short and that you want a cleansed remnant, a cleansed people. You've said that in your scriptures. And Lord, we want to be among that number. We want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. We want to be cleansed and ready to meet you in peace. We want to be cleansed and ready to be able to preach uh, what we know and the experience that we have had so that others who are seeking may find you. And I just pray that you will infill, infill us so that we can be your representatives. In Jesus' name, amen.